place. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Hallelujah. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and look, looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Amen. Father God, I come before thy presence giving you all the glory and honor. Thanking you for this opportunity that you have allowed us to be here in this day, my God. Simply asking that you speak into our lives. Yes, that no one that entered and through these doors depart the same. But full of your joy, your peace, but most importantly, your love. I ask you this in the precious name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. Those who have ears, listen to what the Lord is telling you. Amen. What was said between devotion, what was said in the interpretation of the tongues, I got to listen because God is speaking. Yes, he is. God is always speaking. Yes, he is. But stop hearing what God is trying to tell you and start listening to what God is saying. Mm. See, we hear it, but we don't accept it. When you start to listen, let it absorb and accept and move on what God is telling you. Not what God is telling someone else, but what God is telling you. Focus on you. Today's theme. The price to follow. It's not coincidence. See, it's not coincidence because there is no coincidence here. But today's theme, the price to follow. Amen. Following Christ is a price. It's a price. But before I get to that, last week, I left y'all with a simple question to marinate on. And I don't want answers. See, I don't know how many of you took time to marinate and think on it. I don't know how many of you even remember the question, but I'm going to help you out today because I'm going to ask you again, not because I want an answer, but I need you to marinate on it. And the question was, does your conduct give your leaders reason to report joyfully about you? Your conduct, not only your conduct in church, but your conduct out of church. When you're around your family, when you're around your, your job, when you're in school, when you're around friends, when you're in the mall, no matter where you find yourself, is your conduct the same? <clears throat> or does your conduct have to adapt to its atmosphere? The atmosphere should adapt to your conduct. That's right. There's a difference. You see, so I need you to marinate on that and take that with you and just ask yourself, are you the same person everywhere you go? Is your behavior the same? Are you showing people the true Christianity in you? Because if you're not, you need to analyze this. Amen. And you need to ask yourself, what do you need to change? What do you need to pour into that conduct mm. so that that conduct can be the same everywhere you go. Amen. See, <clears throat> your concern should not be on how people view you. Your concern should be on how Christ sees you. Hallelujah. There's a price to pay. Following Christ, there's a price to pay. You see, and that question it stemmed up from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17. <laughs> I know that it's not easy to follow Christ. But as I said earlier, he already paid the price for you. Can you say you're ready to pay the price for him? Oh. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17. I'm just going to read it real quickly. It says, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit <clears throat> to you. Amen. Before you can submit to your leaders, 
you have to know how to submit to God. Amen. See, you can't say, well, when I learn to submit to my leaders, I'll be able to submit to God. No. When you submit to God, it would be easier to submit to the leaders. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will give you that discernment that you need to show you whether your leaders is leading you in the right direction or in the wrong path. That's as simple as it goes. Amen. But see, in order to submit to Christ, there's a price to pay. You got to be willing to pay that price. And we're going to go through the price. See, because like I said, a lot of us, you, when you hear price, you say, well, why I got to pay for this? You don't got to pay for this. You just got to let go of certain things you hold on to. And it don't cost you nothing. See, it didn't cost you nothing when you picked up what you picked up. So why you hold on to it like if it has so much value? <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. And you will see the true worth in you. Amen, amen? Amen. Come on. Come on. Just, just, let's just follow along because you have to understand. See, this is about what Christ seeks in you. And if you said Matthew 6... Verse 33, you, in the days, in the week that went by, you should be full of joy. Because by just saying, but now let us seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. And all other things will be added. See, we want to add everything else and then seek the kingdom of God. But if it ain't coming from God... How are you going to give God credit for something you're doing on your own? You can't. And God doesn't seek that type of credit. He doesn't need that type of credit. Yes, my God. Yes, my God. See, you have to understand that when you say yes to Christ, it's a new beginning. Amen. Everything in the past has to get cleansed and washed away. You can't bring your past into your present Amen. when you say, I do to Christ. Because what you're going to do is continue to drag your past into your future. Mm -hmm. And you will never get and receive what Christ really has for you. Mm. Let's look at these verses that we read through from the Gospel of Luke. And, and pay close attention to this because you have to realize. Verses 57 and 58. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Here was someone. Jesus didn't ask him for nothing. Jesus didn't say, hey, get up and follow me. This man volunteered. <coughs> See, he said, I will follow you wherever you go. Many people say, I will follow you wherever you go. But when, the th when times get tough, you're like, I will wait here till you come back. I can't follow you no more. I've made it to the end. But see, I love the way Jesus told him. Because Jesus told him, foxes have dens. Birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. In other words, when you, if you're following me, I don't have a fancy home, you know. I don't have this great big house with a whole lot of rooms and beds and quilts and pillows and cushions. I don't have an air mattress. I have no place. I don't have groceries with me where I can feed you. But the foxes have dens because the foxes have a place to stay. A fox has food to eat because he seeks it out. The birds have nests to lay and rest when they're tired. But to follow me, don't think I'm taking you to the house. Don't think we're going to detour and go to someone's, someone's house. See, when Jesus moved, he didn't have a hotel. He didn't call and make reservations where he was going. He didn't have food to eat. But one thing he had was his father. 
And his father provided his every need. Amen. And his father will provide your every yes. need Amen. if you trust in him. Amen. Amen. See, he was letting that man know. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you say out your mouth. Because following me, there is a price to pay. Because you see me doing great things. Because you heard of me doing great things. Don't mean I have a great place for you right now. Mm -hmm. See, that comes later. That comes after you pay the price. You will have a mansion to live in. Food is no worries. You will get the greatest meal of ever. But Jesus let him know ahead of time. Thank you, God. I have no place to lay my head at. When I get to where I got to get to, God, my Father, will provide the motel, hotel, or whatever it is. He will provide my accommodations. He will provide my meal. He will take care of me. But if you follow me, then he will take care of you just as well. Amen, amen. Amen. 59 to 60, it says, He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Wait a minute. The first man volunteered to follow. The first man volunteered and Jesus let him know, Listen, don't think following me is, is that easy. You know? Don't think this is, this is easy. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And now he's walking and he sees another one. He tells him, hey, come on, follow me. This man, he was, it, the Bible says they were walking along the, 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 the roadside. Right? So that means that they, they were just gathered around there. So he sees, one says, hey, I'll follow you wherever you go. The other one says, the other, the other one had an excuse, let's just say. Jesus said to him, follow me. And the man comes up and says, okay, okay, I'm, I'll follow you, but first let me go and bury my father. The scripture doesn't mention whether the man's father was dead or terminally ill, getting ready to die. doesn't mention it. But let's just say, because he said, first let me go and bury my father, we would have to say that what the man was saying, my father's dead, let me go and attend to my business. But if your father was dead and you had to attend to the business, why was you <clears> hanging <throat> out on that roadside? Hmm. Why was you hanging out with your friends? Why weren't you attending to your father's business first? Have, why were you not fulfilling your burial responsibilities at home? What was you doing over here? Hmm. You see, mm -hmm. perhaps it was just an excuse not to follow Jesus at this time. Mm -hmm. See, perhaps it was an excuse, <coughs> bless you, Thank because you. he didn't want to let go of his lifestyle yet. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, 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 he wasn't ready to pay the price. Mm -hmm. You see, you have to understand. Jesus was not teaching the people to forsake their family responsibilities. But he often gave commands based on the view of the people's motives. Mm. What do you mean, Pastor? Very simple. You see, he told the man, follow me. And the, father, and the man said, let me go home and bury my father first. Right? He had some <coughs> motives there. Because eventually, like I said, if you had a situation at home and your father was dead, what were you doing hanging out over here? Well, you know what? It, I, the situation got me, and I just needed to have a beer with my friends, or I just needed people to be around for a little while so then I can attend to my business. No, those are excuses. Because we all know, when we get news that a family member passed away, we don't go hanging out to talk to people about what's going on. We get to that family member's house and comfort them. Amen. In this case here, this man was hanging out on the roadside, but yeah, he said, wait, I'm going to follow you, but first I have to do this. <coughs> Jesus has been telling many of us 
follow me. Hallelujah. And we just been telling Jesus, but first let me do this. But first let me do that. But first let me get this. And let me do this. And Jesus knows that you're not willing to follow him at this time. Wow. You're just coming up with excuses to follow him. Wow. See, because the Bible clearly tells us, trust him with all our heart. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. We serve a good guy. Yes, we do. See, we serve a good guy. The problem is that we want the good, but we don't want to serve. Mm. We want the benefits without reaping. Come on. See, without sowing, yep. We, we want the benefits without sowing. You're absolutely right. Yes, God. We want to reap from someone else's harvest. Amen. Yes. Jesus. But you ain't putting your hands into it. Oof. Ay, 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 Señor. There is a price to pay. Yes, God. There's a price to pay. If your neighbor, matter of fact, Tori, you like planting. You like the garden. So everybody knows, right, in the summer, Tori's going to be planting tomatoes and vegetables and all this stuff. So we're something. all going to get together and just go to his garden, and we're going to pick from them. <laughs> Amen. No. Oh, he don't like that. No. There's a price to pay. See, <laughs> he's sowing, he's laboring, Amen. and we just all want to go wow. and reap. Mm. But that's the same thing we do with God. Wow, come on. That's the same thing we do with God. Family, family See, discount. when it comes to us, we're not okay. Wait a minute, time out. No, you, you ain't coming to my house and take this stuff. But why do we want to go to God's house and take everything? Wow. Mm. Without paying a price. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a price in following Christ. There is a price for everything you do. You won't let no one come and take nothing from your home, but you want to come and take from the house of God. <laughs> you want to come to the house of God and get fed, but you don't want to feed nobody. You want to come and receive the word, but you don't want to give nobody the word. Wow. Hallelujah. There's a price to pay when you serve Christ. Is it worth it? Yes. Are you going to receive your rewards immediately? No. It's like a pension plan. You work, you put money into your pension plan. If you withdraw from your pension plan, you have to pay it back. Or you hit with the penalty. Right? When you do the work of Christ, you can't just go and dip into, oh, well, God, I, I, I put in hours. I did this. I did that. I can take a little bit from here. But you don't want to pay back. Wow, Jesus. Well, I already deposited. But what you deposited is so that when you get into, into, into the heavens, your crown could be full of jewels. Yes, Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to get to the crown in a minute. Don't worry. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. See, Jesus wasn't teaching the people to forsake their family responsibilities. He wasn't telling a man, forget about your responsibilities at home. See, he knew the man had some motives with him. Because if he had business to attend to at home, he shouldn't have been hanging out in that corner on the street, side of the street with everybody else. He decided it was time to mourn after Jesus told him to follow him. See, Jesus was proclaiming that true discipleship requires instant action. Amen. Instant. When he says, follow me, you got to be ready to get up and go. You can't look back. Instant action. When he told Abram, leave your house. Go to where I tell you to go. He didn't even tell him where to go. He just told him, leave your house. Abram didn't have directions of where he had to go to. All he had was the word of God. And that was sufficient. But that was instant action. Because he got up and he moved. And because he moved, then he was given the place to go to. See, we want God to tell us the place he wants to go to before we start moving. Because we have to look it up. See, we got to Google this up. Wait a minute, God. I got to Google up this place. I got to see what's there and what's 
beneficial to me. Wow. Sends you to a third world country, and you're like, I don't know if I could do this. I don't know, God. I, I, I'm not accustomed to that type of food. I'm not accustomed to this type of area. I don't know if I can survive this. Then you're not a true follower. You're not a true believer. Because anywhere that Christ sends you to, anywhere that God sends you to, you will survive. <laughs> above and beyond your own expectations. We want a full list of details before we move for God. That means you're not trusting in Him. See, you're not ready to pay that price. You're not. You're not. You're not. See, there's of course to following Jesus. And we must be ready to serve anytime and anywhere, even when it requires a sacrifice. Hmm. Listen very carefully. Even when it requires a sacrifice. Amen. That means of letting go of something that is impeding you of getting to Christ. Amen. You know what impedes you. You deal with it on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Because every time Christ is pushing you, you pull back. Hallelujah. I'm not ready yet, God. Wow, God. I'm not ready. God, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. You're never going to get there unless you start moving to be there. Amen. Huh? We keep looking <laughs> behind and we don't want to let go of the things that are truly holding us back. Amen. We are not ready to pay the price wow. to follow Christ. Jesus. It becomes difficult and I understand it. But serving God is not like working at a regular job. Amen. It's not. It's better. It's not a nine to five where you go in and you clock in and you clock out and you say my day is over. Working and doing the will of Christ causes overtime. In season and out of season. Yes. There is no time. See, it can be 6 o'clock in the evening for you. But that can be 6 o'clock in the morning for God. Amen. And you're normally getting up around 6 o'clock to go to work, or, and some even earlier. Okay. <clears throat> so when you think your day is over, God's day is beginning. God doesn't work on your schedule and your time. See, we have to learn to adapt into his schedule and time. Yes. You have to be able to understand and know when he is speaking to you and telling you, move, get up, go. Yes, ma'am. Verses 61 to 62. Because the first set, we saw someone volunteer to go, but God warned them and let him know. Jesus let him know. It's a price to pay because I don't have a home. And then the one that he told, follow me, came up with this excuse, wait, let me go home and bury my father first. He should have been doing that and not being on the road. But now let's look at 61 to 62. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand in the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Jesus, 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 what are you trying to tell me? See, Jesus wants total dedication, not half-hearted commitment. Wow. We commit ourselves halfway, and we truly believe we have dedicated our life to Christ. Yes. That's not dedication. Mm -hmm. That is not dedication. See, that's why your relationship doesn't work. Because you want to give a half-hearted commitment and not a true dedication. Yes, God. See, when you put your whole heart into it, then you will receive what God has for you. Amen. See, when you dedicate yourself truly to Christ, your relationship with Him will run a whole lot smoother, a whole lot better. Not easier, but better. 
Amen. Because you see, you may be facing a trial and situation, but God will handle it for you yes, he when you're dedicated to Him. That's right. When you're just half hearted committed, see, what you're saying is, God, I'm just holding this piece over here just in case you don't pull through. God is always going to pull through. Yes, he is. Problem is, is that you're not pulling through. Mm. You're pushing back. Mm. As God is pulling, you're pushing. God, I don't want you to pull me in. I want you to take care of my situation. I, I'll let you pull me in, God, when you deal with my situation. But the funny thing is that God deals with your situation and you still don't let him pull you in. Because after your situation is taken care of, you pull back and you say, well, you know what? Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm out of this one. Mm. But then we want to call on him when the next problem comes. We want to pay half a price for a full reward. Half a price for a full reward. Too many Christians want to pick and choose amongst Jesus' ideas and follow him selectively. Selectively. Yes. Jesus has given us all his ideas, all his commands, all his instructions. Hallelujah. But you know what happens? We pick and choose. Wow. What we want, what we need to follow. You need the entire Bible. You need the old and the new to follow him. Yes, God. The yes. old and the new yes, to God. follow him. Yes. You need all 66 books. You can't look at it and say, well, the Old Testament is the Old Testament. That's, that's like for way back, for way back when. We, we living under grace, and, and that's why Jesus Christ came. So, you know, we just take the New Testament, and if we, if we follow the New Testament, we're okay. No. You have to understand the Old Testament as well. So that you could know why the New Testament came into place. That's right. That's right. It's a price to pay. Mm. You cannot just read the New Testament and say you're full of Christ. Mm. Because you only took in half of the book. Mm. When you go to work, you work a whole week. You want a full week's paycheck. Imagine if you were in the work and they gave you half a week's paycheck. There don't be too many happy campers around here. Right? You won't be in that office. I, I need my other half a check. Some people work half a day and they want a full day's pay. <laughs> but you don't care. Now nah, look, you you first thing you're doing pulling out your time card. No, no, no. I made a copy of my time card. Here it goes right here. I, I came in on this day, this day, this day. Look at the time. This is the time I punched in. This is the time I punched out. But did you really work all those all those hours? Mm. Did you really work all those hours? I'm not, I'm just, just for food for thought, because I'm not asking you. <laughs> I, 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 I worked a nice, good, secular job before. And I used to work from home. Get up at 7.30, everybody would check in, and then I was okay. But at the end of the week, I wanted a full paycheck too. But sometimes, that doesn't work like that with God. That's right. See, with God, you want a full reward. You want to, you, you want to reap the benefits, then you got to start sowing. That's right. Hallelujah. See, and I'm not talking about sowing in money. I'm talking about sowing in time. Yeah. See, when you learn to sow in time, everything else would be added. Then you will learn to sow with your money and everything else because you'll know that you are sowing in fertile ground. It's the price that you have to pay. We just not ready to pay the price. Are you ready? See, when you truly, truly, truly pay the price, then you'll be, you be walking around. Because in the beginning it says, eyes haven't seen 
is having heard the kind of blessings. But when you start to sow, when you start to sow, and you start dedicating, truly dedicating, then the eyes will see and ears will hear of the blessings that you have received. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. But, but we, we, we're not going to stop there because you see, too many Christians want the crown but don't want to carry the cross. Wow. How are you going to receive your crown wow. if you not carry your cross? Wow. <laughs> it doesn't work. Wow. Well, Jesus already carried the cross for me. No, Jesus carried the cross to be buried, to be crucified on that cross to pay for all our sins. Wow. But that doesn't mean he carried your cross. You have to carry your own cross in order to receive Ooh. your crown. Amen. Too many Christians want mercy, but no judgment. What? <laughs> Come on. Come on. In order to get, receive mercy, you have to take the judgment. Mm. See, we have to accept the cross in order to receive the crown. We have to accept judgment as well as mercy. Again, there are too many Christians who are selective Christians. Amen. So you got to ask yourself, which category do you do you fit in? The selective or the dedication? The active. I'm active. See, because active you have active and selective, <laughs> but you have dedicated Christians. No matter what the situation, it does not matter. Because you know that God is going to pull through. Can I get an amen? Amen, amen. 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 You see, verses 61 to 62. I will follow you, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. When God tells you, follow me, you can't say, well, God, let, let, let me first go say goodbye to my family. You know why? Why? Because when you go back to your family and you tell them your good news, they're going to tell you, you're crazy. That's not good. What do you mean you're going to follow Christ? Where are you going? I don't know. How are you going to survive? Wow. I don't know. Then how are you going to follow something you don't know? Because I trust in the Lord. That's right. Hallelujah. See, family, friends, I don't care how you look at it. If you go to them and you tell them, I just came to say goodbye because I'm following Christ. They're going to tell you, you are in the wrong direction. You are heading to destruction. They cannot see the victory because they have not been there. They won't accept you for who you are. I know that for a fact. But how did we say? I don't care. care. Amen. Jesus. That's my IDC. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Short, sweet, and simple. I got you. Just tell them, IDC. <laughs> They're going to look at you like, okay, you already start going crazy. No, no, no. I just want you to know that signif that symbolizes I don't care. I'm moving in Christ. Say it. You got to learn to move ahead. That's right. But I want to show you something because there's a price to, there's a price to pay to follow Christ. Hallelujah. And I'm going to take you all to 1 Kings chapter 19. Verses 19 to 21. First of Kings. Chapter 19. And, and, and I know I have a lot of favorites. But this one here <laughs> has always touched my heart. We know Paul is my friend. Right? And we know why. From the book of Acts. We know Nehemiah. Because his building, his dedication, That's right. his commitment. 
I can't leave Elijah behind. Elijah. Elijah. Go ahead. You can read it, my friend. Verse 19. Verse. 19 to 21. Stand up. <laughs> so Elisha went from there and found no, Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelve pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha Ooh. then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Mm -hmm. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said. And then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Now, I know many of you just heard it. They didn't listen to it. Mm. But, but let me show you something. You see, because remember I said it's instant action. And yes, Elijah told Elijah, let me go back and say goodbye to my mother and father. See, Elijah told him, go ahead, go back. See, but he also said, what have I done to you? And what you have to realize, see, that Elijah wasn't looking for a way out. He wasn't looking for a way out. And I'm going to show you why he wasn't looking for a way out when he said, let me go back and say goodbye. Because look what he did. See, it says that when he went, he left them and went back. He took his joke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he set himself out. Instant action. Amen. So when he went back and he slaughtered his oxen. You have to realize that by killing his oxen, Elijah made a strong commitment to follow Elijah. Amen. That was a strong commitment. Yeah. See, because the oxen was value. Yes. It meant something. Yeah. It was wealth. Amen. Come on. Without them, he couldn't return to his life as a wealthy farmer. So what he took and he slaughtered was all his wealth, his old lifestyle. So that's why it became a strong commitment. Oh, because he Shabbat. said, yes. I'm not going back. Yes. I'm moving ahead. Yes. I'm here to declare to you, my past is over in you. But stay with me. See, this meal that he gave to the people was more than just a big festival. What it was, it was an offering of thanks to the Lord who chose Elijah Amen. to be his next prophet. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. How did Elijah know all of this? Mm -mm -mm. How did he know this? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. See, the cloak was the most important article of clothing a person could own. Mm -mm -mm. It was used as protection against the weather, as bedding, as a place to sit, and as luggage. It's, we, they didn't have the comfort that we have today. That's right. See, but a cloak was all it is. Mm -hmm. And what does the Bible register? See, in the beginning, it says that, so Elijah went from there and found Elijah, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 joke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around That's him. Crazy. Oh, what do yes. you get from that? See, Come you got on. to understand that when he took that cloak and he put it over his shoulders, the Holy Spirit Woo! just fell upon yes. Elijah. Hallelujah. And when he fell upon Elijah, Elijah immediately knew yes. there was a calling. Yes. There was a calling. Yes. There was a calling. Yes. And he Hallelujah. accepted it. That's why he said, let Shut me go back yes, and say goodbye. Huh? Because this is the last time they're going to see me like this. Woo! See, you got to be ready, willing, and able to say goodbye. And I mean, you got to say goodbye. 
See, Elijah went wow. back. Wow. Wow. Slaughtered. Wow. His past. Wow. His lifestyle. Hallelujah. His wealth. Jesus. He slaughtered it. Just to follow Elijah. Hmm. Why? Because he knew that he was the next prophet. Wow. He honored that mm. with all his heart. He trusted the Lord with all his heart. He said, I don't need none of this. I know that I know that I know my God will take care of me. Yes. See, when Elijah placed that cloak over Elijah, that was all she wrote. God has already placed his cloak over you. Santo. What are you waiting for to pay that price? Yeah. That was a price that Elijah paid. Yeah. He said, I'm paying this price because I'm going to follow you yeah. wherever you go. Praise Elijah, God. he let his emotions kick in. Because when Elijah said, let me go back and say goodbye to my mother and father. Elijah said, go back. But right after that, what did he say? What have I done to you? You didn't do nothing to me. You know why? God sent you to do this. So you didn't do nothing but became obedient and believed in the word of God. That's right. You fulfilled God's calling upon my life. Woo! That's what Elijah did for Elijah. Yes, God. You have to understand it. Yes, God. Because your calling is already there. Hallelujah. So, Asking and seeking what your calling is and start moving Woo! in the direction God has called you because he will protect you. Yes, he will. He will shield you. Yes, he he will. will provide for yes, you. Yes, he will. Stop being like the man that was hanging out on the roadside looking for excuses. Mm -hmm. Thank you, the first one said, I will follow you wherever you go. But that was his words coming out of his mouth. And Jesus knew it. That's why he told them, foxes have dens and birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. That's right. Why? Too many times we living under comfort. That's right. We can't let go of comfort. And that's why we cannot trust in God. Amen. I can't let go of this, God. I can't. If I let this go, what am I going to do? That means you haven't truly learned to trust in God. And God will not tell you to let go of something to destroy you. He's going to tell you to let go of something because he has something better for you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. You see... When he told that other one, follow me. That other one wasn't ready. Mm. He wasn't ready to pay the price. That's why he said, hey, let me go home and bury. Let me go bury my father. See, sometimes you have to let the dead bury the dead. That's right. See ya. You have to let the dead bury the dead. See, why do you want to go back to the dead? You know, you have to be careful. Because when you go back to bury the dead, you're going to get contaminated. Because you're not ready. You're not ready. We can sing, are you ready? And we can all raise our hand. That's right. See? We all want to overflow. But we want a selective overflow. Wow. We don't want a full-hearted overflow. Wow, God. Just a selective. Listen, God, if you just let... Little drips roll right off of me and wow. I'll be okay. Wow, God. But every time a drip is trying to roll off of you, you're pushing it back into the cup. <laughs> you know, it, it's coming down. Get back in there. Mm -hmm. Look, where are you going? I didn't tell you to leave me yet. It's not when you tell it to leave you. The word has to flow out of you. That's right. What has been poured in has to come out. You don't pour, you don't get yourself a glass of water and sit it on the table <laughs> for three, four days and then come and drink it, right? No. No. If you pour the glass of water and you drink half a cup, the other half you're going to throw out after it's sat there for a while. Unless some of y'all go back and pour it back into the container. Um. Let me know now. Let me know now. 
you choking You can't do nipple. that. <laughs> you cannot do that. You don't go sit down and eat a bowl of cereal and pour your milk, and when you finish eating the cereal, pour the milk back into the container of milk, <laughs> right? Because it's going to be dirty. So don't put nothing dirty with what God has clean. Don't mix it up. Pay the price. Yes. Pay the price. Hallelujah. Pay the price. Because there is a price to follow Christ. Now, how many of you are ready to follow Christ? Amen. 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 Let's rise up to your feet. Let's rise up to our feet. Because now, I'm going to take you to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. It was given to y'all on Tuesday. And I'm going to give it to you again today. Because there is a price to follow Christ. You have to know what you are willing and how far you're willing to go. You can't say, I'm a follower, I'm a Christian, but live a selective life. Wow. Amen? Yes. Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, it clearly says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Let me stop there for one second. Because it says, with all your heart. Not half your heart. Well, God, I give you 99%. It is still not all your heart. That's why sometimes it's best to just close your eyes and give yourself away to God. That's right. Because as long as your eyes are closed, you're not looking and seeing anything. All you're doing is meditating and feeling what God is doing in you. That's right. Too many times we need to look around before we say, God, I'll give it all to you. Don't let your eyes deceive your heart. <laughs> Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Again, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. We have talked about submission and obedience for days and weeks and weeks and weeks. And if you still didn't understand it, we already know that submission is based on your attitude. See, if you have a negative attitude, then your submission is going to be negative. See, when you're serving Christ, you got to let go of all that negativity. Your attitude has to be 100%. Christ, I will serve you with all my heart regardless of what I'm going through. And obedience, it deals with the fulfillment of something you was instructed to do. It's completing your task. Yes. We spoke about that. Yes. We spoke about it. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, we spoke about it using Elijah. Mm. No? When he spoke to the servant and he told his servant, go straight, go straight to this woman's house. Lay my staff on that boy's face. Don't greet no one on your way there. And if anyone greets you, do not answer. He fulfilled. The servant fulfilled his task. That's all you have to do. Submit to Christ with the right attitude. And obey his commands. By fulfilling them. And you will see the rewards. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. We must count the cost and be willing to abandon everything else that has given us security. Jesus Christ has to become our security. When you learn to submit to Christ with all your heart, Jesus then becomes your security. Not no materialistic thing of this world will become security for you. 
with our focus on Jesus, we should allow nothing to distract us from the manner of living that he calls good and true. That he calls good and true. The word of God is good and true. And that's all you have to keep repeating to yourself. The word of God is good and true. No matter what anybody tells you, the word of God is good and true. When the situations come to you, the word of God is good and true. When people come to confuse you, the word of God is good yes. and true. Hallelujah. Learn to submit to God. Yes. When you learn to submit to God, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. Amen? Amen. Close your eyes. Father God, we come before thy presence giving you all the glory and honor. Thanking you for this moment that you have given us to fill our hearts, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this moment that you have given us to be here today. United as one body in Christ, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you are in point to do, my God. May we depart out of this place here filled with the Holy Spirit, yes, activated, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord. Because it, simply having the Holy Spirit is nothing unless we truly activate it within us, Heavenly yes. Father, to do your will. An activated Holy Spirit will allow you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean on your own understanding. For we exhort you and we glorify you, my God. Yes, we do, my God. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for paying the price. Amen. For all of us, Heavenly Father. For all of us. Now, are y'all ready to pay the price yes. to follow Christ? God bless you all.